If you enjoy today's content, then please consider supporting Top Hat Gaming Man on Patreon. Yeah! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here, welcoming you to the 17th episode of Cancel Consoles. Yes, people, there really are that many consoles out there that have failed to see commercial releases. And we are just getting warmed up, as I have even more of these mysterious consoles to cover in my future pipeline of content. We have looked at all sorts of these oddities, most recently taking looks at the cancelled Taito and Konami consoles, and as recently as last week, having an up-close peek at the terrifying Halcyon, a talking 1985 laser disc based system which was based directly on HAL 9000 from the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. Today we are going to be taking a look at a cancelled project from 1993 by a well known Japanese toy manufacturer we all know as Bandai. This ladies and gentlemen is the story of the Bandai HET a portable version of the Super Famicom. Yeah! To start this story off, we really should take a brief look at Bandai themselves, a company which we have discussed the history of before on this channel, when discussing the Bandai Wonderswan handhelds. The 16-bit Bandai Wonderswan and its later models, the Wonderswan Color, and Wonderswan Crystal were handheld gaming devices designed to compete directly against Nintendo's Game Boy range. The first model of Wonderswan, released in 1999, was not only designed to compete against Nintendo's products, but was in fact designed by the Game Boy creator himself, Mr. Gunpei Yokoi. We have covered Gunpei's story in depth on this channel before, across two different videos focusing directly on the Game Boy and the Wonderswan, so this man's history is covered on here in depth. However, what I have failed to ever talk about on this channel before is Nintendo and Bandai's links prior to the existence of the Wonderswan. Way before the whole Gunpei Yokoi defection fiasco, according to my sources, at one stage in time, Bandai were working directly with Nintendo to create a portable version of the Super Famicom. As strange as this may perhaps sound today, hearing about a company other than Nintendo being allowed to make hardware that plays Nintendo games, this was a fairly common occurrence looking back at history. Examples of these crossovers include the Panasonic Q, a device which played both DVDs and GameCube games. We had the Sharp Twin Famicom, an all-in-one games console which let you insert both Famicom cartridges and Famicom Disk System games into the same unit. And we have both the Famicom Sharp TV and the Super Famicom Sharp TV, which I am demonstrating in my video right now before your eyes. The SF1 SNES TV was a television set manufactured by Sharp with a built in fully licensed Super Famicom. This niche product was developed and marketed specifically to the Japanese market in 1990, mostly as a space saving measure due to the fact that the people of Japan traditionally chose to live in much smaller properties than that of overindulgent space wasting westerners. So overall, this was a useful piece of technology for that market. Further factoids regarding this thing is that it came with AV output terminals and an extended terminal which allowed connection to later peripherals such as the Satellaview. The television set also came with this spiffing remote and um, this flabby bit which is apparently as expensive as the actual television itself due to most of them breaking off and getting lost from most models over time making it highly collectible. So as we can see there have been plenty of occasions where external companies have produced hardware which allows you to play Nintendo games and the Bandai HET would have been another example of one of these products if it had made it as far as reaching the marketplace. Just one year after the Super Nintendo saw a release throughout Europe, a prototype of this mysterious device was shown to the public at the Tokyo Game Show in 1993. The HET, part of this system's name, stands for Home Entertainment Terminal 
and the device was, as mentioned, essentially a portable version of the Super Famicom. Information on this product online is extremely limited, and I was unable to find any information with regards to this system's dimensions and weight. However, from the video we are viewing, and from photos we have seen, we can conclude that this looks like a fairly large product. Perspectively, this is easy to grasp, simply from the fact that we can measure its size directly against the Super Famicom cartridges that appear in the imagery. Reportedly, this device would have also came with a built-in TV tuner and the capabilities to interface other peripherals such as CD-ROM drives, modems and printers, basically making the device a primitive laptop which has the ability to accept Super Famicom cartridges into its slot. Speculators often infer that the reasoning behind the cancellation and commercial release of this product would have been for all the reasons you would expect from looking at the system really. Firstly, the device looks like it would have been expensive to produce and pricey to procure. Secondly, a device of this size surely would have suffered from all the battery life problems other gaming devices had at the time. And thirdly, that Nintendo may have got cold feet having another portable games console on the market when the Game Boy was already readily available. So, if this thing saw a release, would it have done well? It is hard to say really. The system was most likely cancelled due to the limitations we have just highlighted. But sometimes flawed products break through regardless. As a child, I am 100% sure this is a product I would have really wanted, simply for the fact I was so impressed with my attachable GameCube screen many years later. The GameCube screen finally allowed me to bring my current gen home console on holidays with me when staying at places with no televisions. So if I had have owned a Bandai HET, I could have started playing my home console games abroad an entire decade earlier than on the GameCube. Despite this though, it does look like a rather hefty piece of kit for a child to be lugging around with them. So I would predict this was probably a product they would have aimed at wealthy, fully grown travelling Japanese businessmen instead. Overall, the Bandai HET is yet another extremely interesting footnote within gaming history, and it is cool to know that there was a portable Super Nintendo before even that of the Sega Nomad. It is a shame that Nintendo did not follow through with their plans, as it looks like a quirky device. I guess Genesis really does what Nintendo don't. Between the HET and the Wonderswan, it is of note that Bandai had another crack at the gaming market three years later, in 1996, collaborating and manufacturing a platform with another computing giant. That time around, in the form of Apple, creating the Apple Bandai Pippin, Apple's only attempt at entering the console market. As obscure as this platform is, amusingly the Pippin was not cancelled at all and did in fact see a commercial release. But this is all a story for another video entirely. So join me down the line for that Tao. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoy learning about cancelled games consoles, I have created a whole playlist featuring over a dozen cancelled consoles which never featured commercial releases. Further to this, I create all sorts of gaming trivia videos on this channel. So if you like what you see, I would really appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, hit the notification bell and left a comment to let me know what your thoughts are on today's content. Which gaming stories would you like to see me cover in depth on this channel next? Finally, my channel Top Hat Gaming Man is partly funded from a fantastic generous support and donations I receive from my amazing Patreon supporters. So shout outs in the credits to Carl Johnson, Shizuka Kobayashi, Greg Hooper, Richard Clark, Harold Webb, Synth Spaces, Kevin Fahaley, David Mountford, Andrew Brzezanski, Edward O'Reilly, Tom Elliott, Mark S. Hines, Gary Pinkett, The Gaming Muso, SpongeMap B, Quang DX, Stuart McDermott, Nash Quad, Michael Baker, Andy Aldridge, and all of my other patrons. Not only are you making my dreams more realistic by the day, but you are helping fund tens of thousands of people's entertainment who regularly view this channel. So thank you to all of you for helping all of them.